Long ago, in ancient Greece, there was a famous storyteller named Aesop. He was best known for his animal fables. Fables are stories that can teach us important lessons about life. As the years passed, Aesop's fables were handed down from grandparents and parents to their children and grandchildren. Unlike the storytellers, they never seemed to grow old. Perhaps one reason is that all good stories are fun to listen to, regardless of their age. Also, times may change, but people and what happens to them when they behave in certain ways remain very much the same. For example, we learn from some of the stories that those who are lazy often suffer when they put off important chores, and that's what our first Aesop's fable is all about. It's called. The grasshopper and the ants. Once there was a grasshopper who loved to sing. He sang during the day, and he sang during the night. When he wasn't singing, he could be found hopping around, playing tag with all the other grasshoppers. Of course, he had to take some time off from his play so he could eat. Something easy to do on warm summer days when there were plenty of juicy, tender leaves to munch. One day, when the grasshopper was eating a particularly fine milkweed leaf, he noticed a line of tiny ants marching along in the grass. He was curious about them. He wanted to know why they seemed so very busy. Pardon me, but may I ask what you are doing? Why, we're taking food to our home. Where we store it for the cold winter months ahead. It's still summer. There's plenty of time for that. I'd rather sing and play and eat. Well, we ants have fun too, but we know one must also work hard to prepare for the cold weather ahead. <laughs> Go on. The grasshopper thought the ants were very foolish to work so hard on such a fine summer day. That wasn't for him. So, after lunch, he sang to his lady love. Played some more tag, and then curled up under the branch of a sycamore tree to take a nap. Now this went on all summer long, until one day the winds of autumn began to blow, and when they did, the ants worked even harder. They wanted to be sure there would be enough food for themselves and their children when the snows covered the ground. Finally. The grasshopper decided that now would be a good time to gather and set aside some food for himself. Ah, but it was too late. All the food was either dried out, spoiled, taken, or had been blown away by the cold autumn winds. The grasshopper was becoming very hungry. Pardon me, but do you have any food to spare? Oh, I'm sorry. But I've heard it's going to be a very long, cold winter this year, and I need to make certain there's enough food for my little ones. However, if there's anything left at the end of the winter, I'll be happy to share with you. Everywhere he went, it was the same story, and so the grasshopper learned an important lesson, which just happens to be the moral of this story. When you need your daily bread. It's always best to plan ahead. The tortoise and the hare. There was once a hare who loved to brag about how fast he could run. I am the fastest runner in the forest. There is no one who even comes close. His friend the tortoise had heard this boast many times before, and by now was growing tired of it. You're not as fast as me. You're a tortoise. You're as slow as molasses. Well, I'll tell you what. To prove that I'm faster than you, I'll challenge you to a race. <laughs> you race me? Well, okay. If you're foolish enough to challenge me, I accept. The two immediately set a route for the race, and then off they went. The hare shooting from the starting line, and the tortoise. Well, that was another story. In a matter of minutes, the hare was hopping far, far ahead of the tortoise, who slowly lumbered along, only a short distance from the starting line. 
After a while, the hare decided that he was so far ahead that he could take a rest. I think I'll take a nap. I have the time. So he curled up under a big tree and fell fast asleep. As the sun moved across the sky, the tree's cool shade pulled the hare deeper and deeper into sleep. Hours passed, and he didn't wake up. In time, the tortoise quietly walked by the hare. Oh my goodness! I better get going. Ah, but it was too late, for the tortoise had been waiting at the finish line for more than an hour. The hare, who still thought he was the fastest runner in the forest, learned an important lesson: if you want to win the race, use a determined, steady pace. Not all of Aesop's fables are about animals. Sometimes people are in them. One example is the boy who cried wolf. Once there was a shepherd who did the same thing day after day, and he didn't like it. It's boring to watch sheep eat grass all day. But then one day he hit upon what seemed to be a wonderful plan. Oh, I know. I'll run through the village and shout, "Help! A wolf is attacking my sheep! Help me chase him away!" And that's exactly what he did. The villagers, being helpful folk, stopped what they were doing and dashed to the shepherd's field to chase away the wolf. When they arrived, however, they discovered there wasn't any wolf. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Fool you! Well, the shepherd thought it was a wonderful joke, <laughs> but the villagers were not at all amused. A week passed, and things got back to normal. Once again, the shepherd was bored. You know, I had a lot of fun last week. I think I'll do that joke again. So he did. And once again, the villagers, being helpful folk, ran to his field, only to find that they had been once more the victims of a prank. Oh, hee hee hee! Gotcha! Oh yeah, very funny. <laughs> the shepherd didn't seem to understand that the villagers were getting upset at his antics, and so. Several weeks later, he again ran back and forth through the streets, yelling at the top of his lungs that the terrible wolf was attacking his sheep. It's attacking my sheep! It's attacking my sheep! This time, however, the villagers came only very reluctantly, and when they saw that they had been fooled once again, they were very, very angry. The shepherd finally understood. That the townsfolk didn't like being lied to. Then one day, a wolf really did attack the shepherd's flock. The shepherd dashed to the village for help, but when he told everyone about the wolf, no one believed him. No, really, I'm telling the truth this time. Oh, right. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me more than once, shame on me. Well. Since no one came to chase away the wolf, he had a very fine feast indeed. By the time the shepherd returned to his field, his entire flock was gone. And then it came to him: when you say what isn't true, people lose their faith in you. When the villagers rushed to help the shepherd and the boy who cried wolf, they showed that they were cooperative. They were willing to help one another. Our next Aesop's fable, the horse's mistake, is about a horse who isn't cooperative. And, well, as you watch, you'll see what happens. Once a farmer took some wheat to market. All of it was loaded onto a cart pulled by his donkey. The farmer's horse refused to help. Instead, he insisted on kicking up his heels and frolicking along the road. After several hours of pulling his heavy load, the donkey noticed in the distance a very steep hill. 
Mm. It was hot and tired, and knew it would be difficult to pull the cart all the way to the top. So he asked his friend, the horse, for some help. I don't think I can make it much farther without some help. Do you think you could carry some wheat for me? Yay! Not me. Why, that hill is the hardest part of the journey.、Oh, the donkey please, pleaded with the horse, please, 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 but it was no use. Oh, pretty, please help me! The horse just ran away, and once again began to kick up his heels and frolic. Well, the hill was even more difficult to climb than the donkey had imagined. About halfway up, he stopped. His legs buckled, and he fell down in a heap. When he explained that he couldn't get up, the farmer called the horse and loaded all the wheat onto his back, and the donkey as well. And up walked the horse, struggling with a much heavier load than he would have had if he had just helped the donkey in the first place. The moral of this tale: for yours and everyone else's sake, cooperate. The fables in this program are only four of the hundreds of Aesop's fables you can find in books. If you've enjoyed these stories, why not visit your library or your learning or media center? Where you can find many more of them.